If you just joined us, we've been talking about Esther Ranson, obviously, this morning, and how she's considering going to Switzerland to end her life. The broadcasting legend and Childline mm. founder has obviously been on our screens for decades now, huge campaigner. No surprise that she's entered this particular debate personally. And she was at the heart of one of the greatest moments in television history. Many people say this is their favourite television moment of all time. It featured Sir Nicholas Winton. It was 1988, and it was on Esther's mm. show, That's Life. Yes, yeah, so Sir Nicholas was responsible for saving the lives of hundreds of children fleeing the Nazis in World War II. Well, now a new film starring Anthony Hopkins as Sir Nicholas is being released, and it shows the mm. moment the silent hero met some of the people who owed him their lives. Well, I'm really pleased to say that joining us now is Sir Nicholas's son, Nick Winton, and one of the children who he saved, the Reverend John Fieldsend. Welcome to you both. It's good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good, good morning. Um, let's talk about your dad, first of all, and his extraordinary modesty, because he didn't tell anybody, as after, when the war was over, what he'd done. He kept it a complete secret, never, never discussed it with anyone, and I think it was your mother found a scrapbook or something in, in the loft with, with the children's names in. Yeah, he was getting to his late 70s and it was sort of time to start clearing the attic. And Mum said, you know, we've got to find a place for this. And so we were asked, does anybody know somebody who might be interested? <laughs> and uh, through a long series of connections, it ended up with a Holocaust researcher called uh, Betty Maxwell. Right. He got trainload after trainload of children who otherwise would have been sent to the concentration camps. They would have been rounded up by the incoming Nazis and they would have been sent to the camps and gassed or starved to death. He saved their lives with no issue, question about that. But as we heard there in, in, in that little film, the last trainload with a couple of hundred children on it, he couldn't get out. It was blocked. The Germans were, were moving in fast and they stopped it from leaving. And he never forgave himself for that. He, he felt guilty about that. Well, there, there are a couple of things, Richard. The first is... Um, he didn't do it single-handedly. He may have been the inspiration, the driving force to get the team together, um, but there were people who were helping. Of course. And, um, yeah, tragically, the last train was scheduled to leave on the 1st of September, and in early morning, uh, Germany marched into Poland, and that was the time to declare war, and the borders to Germany were closed, and the train didn't leave. And those children died? Almost all of them. It's just a heartbreaking and situation. He's... Yeah, absolutely. I mean... I guess, you know, he had a monkey on his back which kept reminding him of the tragedy rather than the success. He wasn't much more than a kid. I mean, he was, what, late 20s, 30 or so? Yeah. He was a, mm. a Hampstead stockbroker. Yeah. What? Trained in banking in Germany <laughs> oh. just after the crash. So he probably had more of a sense of what was going on in Germany than many did. Right. So what inspired him to do this? I think just the humanity seeing people in the camps. When you see the film, they've reconstructed what the camps look like. There's archive footage. I mean, if you imagine... I what, mean, the death camps? No, of, of, the, of the refugee camps. I see, yeah. You know, people like, people like us, you know, reasonably well-off, good jobs, suddenly reduced to camping out under canvas with nothing to eat in the freezing cold of Central European winter. I mean... Everybody who saw it would be moved. It's just, it is an incredible story, what happened. And, John, you were one of those children that... Yes, I was. ..he saved. You must be eternally grateful to him. Absolutely. And, incidentally, um, about that train that didn't leave, mm. um, Esther Anson asked me to have a word with uh, Nicky uh, about that, and uh, we did have off-camera... We what did, did, have what did you say to him about it? I, I just endeavoured to... Reassure him. Real, ..realise it, it wasn't his responsibility and that um, mm. he shouldn't bear the, the sense of guilt for that. You were seven? I was Do you I remember seven. it? I rem remember it very clearly. What happened to you? Well, my journey was, um, I think, a bit unique. We were living on the uh, Czech-Slovak-Polish border in Vitkov. And probably, I'm uh, guessing a little bit here, it was too far to go to Prague. Right. So my parents, I think probably with the Jewish Refugee Committee, got me to a school in Hanover mm -hmm. in Germany. Mm -hmm. It had been a horticultural college. It was now a centre for unaccompanied children. Right. And uh, we were there for some weeks, my brother and I. And uh, then uh, 
Nicky actually diverted one of his trains to pick my brother and me up. In Hanover? In Hanover. That's the first time we joined the Winton uh, and who, trains. When you eventually got... I mean, by the skin of your teeth, mm. when you eventually got here to the UK, thanks to him, who looked after you? I went to um, a family in Sheffield, ordinary coal mining family. Mm. My foster parents were... Um, my foster father was under manager of a colliery in Sheffield, <laughs> where the big shopping centre is now. And how did you settle in? Uh, settled in fairly well. They were a beautiful family. They must have been. But uh, pretty strict. <laughs> and they wanted me to learn English pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the thing was this. If I didn't ask in English, I went hungry. <laughs> if I asked for a kartoffel, I went hungry until I asked for <laughs> potatoes. If I asked for Erdberg, I went hungry until I asked for strawberries. And what happened to your brother? Was your brother with you or did he go somewhere else? Uh, my brother was with me just for a few weeks, then he went to a separate home, also in Sheffield. Right. And listen, a film has now been made of 